Well, hello, colleagues. I am greeting you today again from my home, as I try to do on most Fridays, and offer you a perspective about a few things that are happening within the organization. Uh, and I don't know about you, but I thought after commencement, uh, things were going to slow down dramatically. That has not been the case this week. In fact, it feels like things just keep going and pick up at a very rapid rate. Uh, while I'm on that, though, let me just share uh, my deep appreciation to uh, both our MCTV and special events team for the phenomenal, absolutely phenomenal uh, commencement exercises that we saw last Friday. I don't know about you, but there was something very pure, uh, very elegant about the way in which we were able to lift up the experiences of students and their stories as a part of that graduation uh, ceremony. Unbelievable. Loved it. Probably, I have to say, maybe even loved it a little bit more than the face-to-face -face because it really puts in students at the center of that program. So thank you all so much for all the work that went into that. Uh, the production was simply phenomenal. Um, speaking of things that are also an interesting moment time for us, we have probably heard by now that Governor Hogan has issued some different directives as we move into phase one of a state's recovery plan and thinking very deliberately about how we start to, quote unquote, reopen Maryland as it relates to the coronavirus. Um, yesterday, uh, our county executive also then spoke to specifics as they relate to Montgomery County. So keep in mind, there are certainly federal uh, things that are taking place, but specifically for us in Maryland, what our governor says is very important. But even more specific is that of Montgomery County, uh, where our county executive offers some perspectives about a gradual phased in reopening of Montgomery County. Uh, what I think is important, we know that the CDC is still encouraging hand washing, uh, face coverings, and has to be very deliberate about our comings and going and the way in which we interact and still practicing uh, physical distancing. Uh, but we also know that these are recommendations that it will only mean something if we all embrace them and lean into them. So please continue to do the work you're doing in this space. We do not want to see uh, this virus resurface. We want to be able to hopefully bend the curve and keep the curve bent. I also know that we're also saying that it's going to be very important uh, that we're very deliberate about monitoring over time. So I encourage you also uh, to become familiar with the county's website, which looks at some very key uh, performance indicators as it relates to the virus. Now, that said, I think it's also important for people to know that the college is still doing our assessment as we decide and move forward in this pandemic. Um, if you read the MC COVID-19 Health and Safety Plan uh, that I shared with the college community just last week, you know that we're thinking about this from every angle that we can, from students to employees to those people who visit us, and we're being very deliberate about how we phase in our approach and return to uh, campus in very deliberate ways. Um, you will hear from the college directly on any changes that we make as it relates to our own status. But I want to be very clear about this. Uh, nothing that the county or state says or does about reopening automatically affects the college. Uh, there's a broader set of circumstances that we have to be aware of and be deliberate in thinking about. Uh, as we prepare to step back into on our campus facilities, uh, there is deep cleaning that has to be done. Uh, there's filters that have to be changed. All the types of things that many of us are completely unaware of, it takes time to do that work. So we're going to be doing that and following a plan uh, that our CAT, working with our facilities group, has worked on. And I'm particularly excited about the deliberateness and the, the timeliness in which they've been thinking about these issues. As an institution, we will be making our own decisions about how and when we will resume our face-to-face -face work uh, based on some unique uh, circumstances. So for now, we will continue working remotely uh, as we are with our teaching and learning through at least June 30th, uh, when at that point uh, we will reevaluate re our decision. Now, many of you are thinking, why can't we just go back right now? And as I described, there is a whole plethora of activities that go into actually preparing our physical plant for a return. As I described, there's lots of deep cleaning. There's preparation work in terms of how we arrange uh, workstations, how we think about protective uh, devices that we may need to put in place, how we want to monitor excuse me, the comings and goings of our employees. So it's very important for us to have very definitive plans as we move forward in this. 
So you can be assured that we will alert everyone as we start to go through this process. We'll be very key in keeping you updated through the college's website, through email, through social media, so that you will know what our strategies are as we go forward. And we're taking these steps because the primacy of this work is keeping everyone safe, that being our students, our employees, and our visitors to the Montgomery College campus. And we're doing this all very much informed uh, by what we're seeing both at the state and county level, but also the excellent work that we're seeing done from our CAT group and our facilities team has truly been remarkable. Now, you um, know that as we proceed from this remote work, there are lots of still phenomenal, wonderful things that are happening within the college community. <clears throat> In fact, we have a new program uh, that you hopefully have seen announced uh, earlier this week, Raptor Ready, which is a scholarship program that's set up to help MCPS graduates who graduated this uh, spring uh, so they can start taking classes remotely at Montgomery College this summer. Uh, the program covers tuition and fees for one Montgomery College class plus technology expenses. So we're very excited about this. So if you know someone who might benefit from this, please have them apply. Uh, they ha have to have been graduated or will be graduating this month in June, have to be um, uh, financially impacted by the COVID-19 uh, pandemic. And as a result of that, are able then to uh, take advantage of these resources the college is going to designate for this purpose. Uh, this program, I think, is an innovative, creative response to this environment. I um, mean, it's something that Montgomery College does well. We think about how we partner, how we can impact our community positively, and then we use our resources in that manner. One more thing I'll share with you is that um, we have a, a county program that's taking place that I think you all should know about uh, regarding rental assistance for those who've been impacted by COVID-19. Uh, to see if you qualify, please visit their website. Uh, financial strain along with other COVID-19 expenses and challenges can impact everyone very seriously. And as a result of that, there's also mental health support that's available for employees through our faculty staff assistance program. And this also means that even each of us, I think, needs to continue to think about how we can take breaks to take care of ourselves and to take care of others and to be much more intentional about preserving our energy and being very deliberate in that space. Uh, we need each other now more than ever. Uh, we are a community. Uh, we are practicing kindness. We're practicing clarity. But more importantly, remember how to take care of each other as we're taking care of ourselves. All of this, I hope, is of benefit and information to you, and I look forward to seeing you next week. With that, be well.